house of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Balashalisha, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He said it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Psalm 145, verses 10 through 19 can be found on page 802 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say it in unison. All of your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. 
The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and give them your food in their due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Lord, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know that the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, and so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, 
got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's good to be here with you. Today, we hear the beloved and significant story of Jesus feeding the multitudes. I say beloved because indeed, it is a wonderful story and loved by many. It's one of my favorites. And significant because it holds the distinction of being the only miracle story that's told in all four of the Gospels. Looking back at my notes for this passage, I found a cartoon that the Reverend Ron Pogue shared with me when he was here a number of years ago. It shows Jesus talking to the crowds as he fed them, and he was saying something like this. Now I want all of you to pay attention to what I'm doing because I don't want four different versions of this popping up later. <laughs> and of course, that's what happened. Four slightly different accounts of this event. Yet the very idea that this story appears in each of the gospels tells us something important. It tells us that this story was essential throughout the communities of the early church, essential to knowing who Jesus is. Uniquely in John's telling, not only do we have Jesus feeding the multitude, it's closely followed by Jesus walking across the water to reach the disciples. Signs of wonder, signs of power, of the inbreaking of God, the essence of who Jesus is the manifestation of the inbreaking of God into the world. For the Jewish followers and for those familiar with them, they see the inbreaking of God in this because they know the history of God's actions, the stories of their ancestors, the long history of how God delivered them through times of political turmoil, through drought, through war, lean times and fat times, how God acted to feed them, deliver them, heal them. In John's gospel, these are signs, signs of God's presence, and knowledge is gained by the recognition of those signs, and that knowledge is empowering for the followers of Jesus. They see that as signs of God's action. Now, these summer's Sundays in the church calendar are sometimes referred to as ordinary time from the word ordinal or numbered, but these days through which we are living are anything but ordinary, as we all know. As virus numbers once again increase, as our country remains politically polarized, as climate traumas occur more frequently across the world, and as the response of the super wealthy to that is their own space exploration, these days are anything but ordinary. And unlike our first century ancestors, we are inundated with all kinds of information from all over the globe. We have the world's knowledge base at our fingertips. We can instantly switch from a documentary on 
World War II to a video of a dolphin being rescued from fishing nets in the ocean. And while we watch the news on television, other stories scroll across the bottom of the screen. I don't know about you, but I find all this available information doesn't always translate into knowledge for me, and certainly not into wisdom for me. It's not empowering. Rather, it sometimes has the opposite effect of overwhelming and disempowering me, bringing on anxiety or apathy. What is it about this miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 that makes it so critical to our understanding of who he was and who he is and who he will continue to be? The world is a hungry place, ever it has been so. People are hungry for food, food to sustain them physically and food for their souls. The hunger of the world is greater and deeper than just physical hunger. People are hungry to belong. People are hungry to find meaning. People are hungry to be loved. The essential miracle that I see here, the sign of God's inbreaking, is the power of Jesus to quell hunger, to take what is offered by a child, something as ordinary, is barley, loaves, and fish, and to take that simple and generous offering and to make something extraordinary from it. To take and bless the ordinary elements of life and to make of them something sacred, something holy. What seems remarkable in this much-loved and repeated story is that crowds followed him and they bring all their hungers and all their needs to him their needs for healing, their needs for wholeness. And what they experience is abundance. They are fed. They encounter something holy and wholly other, something outside their everyday experience, grace and peace. Now, not surprisingly, they want to translate what they have experienced into something that they understand. They want to seize him and make him king. Jesus withdraws. This is not the way his power will break into the world. Christ in breaking is by another route, as we all know. Professor Gail O'Day writes about preaching the church calendar, and she calls the part of the church year from Advent through Epiphany the incarnational cycle, and Lent through Pentecost the paschal cycle, and the rest of the year the ordinary time, ordinary cycle. I think this year, however, encountering the feeding of the multitude from John's gospel, John's gospel, which as you remember, has no angels or shepherds or manger in the beginning, but rather begins with this, the word was made flesh to dwell among us with the light that has come into the world, the light that has come into the world in darkness cannot overcome it. This year, living through COVID and all the other maladies around us, it is the perfect time to preach the incarnation today and every day of this year. God coming into the world through the person of Jesus, the Holy One, coming into the everyday world of people's hungers and needs and transforming the stuff of everyday life a child's lunch, graciously given, to feed the needs of the world. And in so doing, producing an abundance of grace, an abundance of grace to spare. Excuse me, it's my allergy season. I recently retired, about three months ago, as the rector of the Church of the Resurrection in Jessamine County. And I am determined this time to not flunk retirement. <laughs> like I did last time when I retired from state government and went to seminary and became a priest. So I picked up a book on the stages of life. I thought that might help me. By J. Philip Newell of the Iona community. He writes of Celtic spirituality. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He, rem he reminds us of the essential 
sacredness of all life that enlightens all persons coming into the world. There is a holiness, a light within all of us that cannot be extinguished. There are other ways of knowing than what is imparted to us from the loud voices around us in the world. God speaks to us in many ways, certainly from the pages of Holy Scripture, and also from deep within our own lives. There are other ways of knowing. Parker Palmer said this, the end of human knowledge is the beginning of love's knowledge. Love's knowledge. When I open the eyes of my heart to love's knowledge, even just on my morning walk in my neighborhood, I see life-giving gifts everywhere. God's gifts of grace and abundance through the offerings of human hands. There's a stream restoration project in my neighborhood park, and I know the person whose persistence has made that possible. There's a new farmer's market speaking of feeding, close to my neighborhood that I know was brought about by persistence of just one or two people in a neighborhood association. The world is a hungry place, ever it has been so. Jesus says, it is I, do not be afraid, as he walks towards his disciples. The world is a hungry place, but we still come to be fed by the incarnate one, who takes the simple gifts given, bread and wine of the earth and of human hands, and feeds us and blesses us, so we can be sent into the world, ready to share our simple loaves and fishes, to be transformed into sacred acts of love. Amen. Our service continues on page 358. Please stand if you are able as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, begin on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified in 
We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer, especially Judy, Diane, Harriet, and Marshall, from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from any distress. Give to the departed, especially Guy and Barbara, eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your name to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you are able. You may be seated. So good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd where we are live here in Lexington, Kentucky on this uh, Sunday morning. Good to gather together for worship and the Holy Eucharist. A couple of things to draw your attention to. Uh, the first of which is um, I want to share with you what I think is my, my favorite thing about um, being sick and and having to recover slowly but surely, we get to welcome all manner of new gracious, not new, but gracious and talented friends into the space. So what a delight to have Father Brady with us this morning, and what a wonderful gift to have Mother Margaret with us this morning, and thank you for the gift of that beautiful sermon. What a, what a, what a fun thing to have to have help. So welcome, welcome, welcome. As Mother Margaret said so uh, wonderfully in her sermon, the world is indeed a hungry place. You know, the world hungers. And so the announcements I have, um, we didn't actually plan this, but the announcements that I have are all about the local hungers of our good world. Um, we're building a Habitat for Humanity house for, some, for a family that hungers for a home. We're partnering, as you know, with local businesses and other churches. You can sign up, go online to our website and sign up to be a part of that Habitat build. We're also partnering with Ashland Elementary, 
and Booker T. Washington Elementary, who are sort of our local adopted schools, one of which is in our, our neighborhood here, on a school supply drive. Not everybody um, in our, I know y'all know this, but not everybody in our community um, can afford the school supplies that they need, like so many of us can. So we're partnering with the schools to help folks who, little ones who can't. So go to our website and find out how you can be a part of the school supply drive to make sure all of the kids in our community have what they need to start school so that they can learn what they need to have a rich and a vibrant life. One of my favorite things is, is partnering with Church Under the Bridge, uh, where we feed and worship with our, um, or share a meal with and worship with our neighbors who are experiencing homelessness. So mark your calendars, August 8th is the next time we do church under the bridge. So lots of opportunities to, to tend to, as Mother Margaret said, the hungry world out there. I think the final thing that I want to, no, no, two, two things I want to point you to. Um, Emory reports to me that we have some new Connect cards. Do you all see them? In the pew. Take out these, um, yeah, we do right here. There's a new Connect card in the pew, so if you're new in our midst or if you think we've got your phone number wrong or your email wrong, fill out a Connect card, would you, and put it in the plate because we want to be able to connect with you, especially if you're new. We want to know that you're here, and we want to follow up with you and, and uh, welcome you into the fellowship that is this Good Shepherd Church. The last thing I want to point you to um, and if you don't have a Connect card in front of you, scoot over and steal it from your neighbor. The last thing I want to point you to is we're going to do a new church directory. It's been, I don't know, umpteen million years since we did a church directory, and, and the pictures are out of date, and not all of you are in there, so we're going to finally do a new church directory. It's Father John's project, and he's super excited about it, and I am too, and he's put together a team of volunteers to help make it happen. The pictures will be taken the second week in September. But sign up now. You can go onto our website. I think it's under Parish Notes, Emory, and you can sign up to have your picture taken. There's no cost to you. Just come have your picture taken, and we'll make a picture directory. It's our tradition in this place to offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving upon anyone who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this week. I see someone towards the back being pushed out of her pew. I don't know if she's going to come or not. Any birthdays or anniversaries in the space? Really? Hmm. So, being a PK, y'all know what a PK is? Being a PK, a priest kid, can cause a lifetime of trauma. So, I won't make any of the PKs stand or come forward. But um, I do have a list of other people. Is anybody reading between the lines here? Betty is. I've got a, we've got a 16-year-old PK. Uh, and I've got a list of folks who are not with us. So I've got Max Maggard. I've got Nancy Jackson. I've got Alice Daner. I've got a PK whose initials are GH. We won't go any further than that. And folks at home who are with us online, there are others of you out there who have birthdays and anniversaries. I don't know who you are, but you, you do stand where you are. Congregation, are we good to pray even though we don't have anybody right here? Just use your imaginations. So you have the birthday prayer in the back of your prayer book, and a lot of you have it memorized, and we're going to pray it together right now. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and neighbors through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for the person who is in the room, good and gracious God, here is your beloved daughter, gathered in the church of all creation, celebrating the anniversary of her birth. May the love that has carried her this far in life fill her to overflowing on this day and carry her all the rest of the way on the very wings of your grace. And I ask God's blessing upon each one of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you didn't get all of that, Betty Larson can explain it to you after the service, but I'm betting most of you got it. Ascribe to the Lord the honor, do His name, bring offerings, and come into His courts with praise.
i
Our service be continues with the great thanksgiving prayer B on page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. stand or kneel. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of his new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. And by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Dr. Middleton, the number. Hymn 366. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.